Hey guys, it's Kim. Welcome to today's video. So I know I talk a lot about the importance of saving and investing, but I realized I haven't exactly given a lot of guidance on how you can get started investing so that you can be on your way to building your wealth. I know investing can seem risky, scary, and even confusing. And if you're one of those people who's looking for a little guidance, you've come to the right place because today I'll explain exactly how you can get started investing with $10 or less. And before I get into the details, let me just start by saying that I am not here to sell you anything. The investing platforms I mentioned today are the ones that I use myself. There are a ton of apps and websites that offer all sorts of investments in stocks, mutual funds, real estate, and even cryptocurrency. But like I said, I am not here to sell you anything. The products that I mention are not affiliated with me in any way. These are just products that I use and trust and feel comfortable mentioning to you based on my own experience with them. I always recommend that you do your own research before giving your money to anyone because Bernie made off. Okay, so I know that I always say that saving your money alone is only going to get you so far with building wealth. You need to put that money to work and have your money earning money for you while you sleep in the form of earning compound interest. One of the easiest ways to do this is by investing. How do you get started investing? Well, number one is you need to have money to invest. And in order to do this, you're going to need to live below your means. This means not living paycheck to paycheck and making sure you have the spare cash to put into an investment. You should not be investing if that means that you're going to have to put expenses on a credit card you can't pay off each month and end up going into debt. So first and foremost, get your budget in check. At the very minimum, maybe dig in your couch and scrounge up some spare change and that'll be enough to get you started. Once you have your budget squared away and you have freed up money to invest or found spare change in your couch, then my personal recommendation when it comes to investing, especially when you're starting out, is to be conservative. So that means picking investments that are less risky because the last thing you want to do is put your hard earned money into something like Enron or a pyramid scheme and then see it vanish. So one of the lower risk investment options is called a bond. A bond is basically a type of loan that a company or the government will lend to someone. It's like an IOU where the person borrow, borrowing money pays that money back to the lender at a fixed interest rate, which is how the bond grows in value. There are many types of bonds, but the bonds that I currently have outside of my retirement accounts are with a company called Worthy Peer Capital. These are small business bonds that are security backed. So while there's still risk involved with buying these bonds, it's lower than with something like stocks. Each bond costs $10 and with Worthy, you get a guaranteed 5% return on your investment and you pay no fees. So it's a pretty sweet deal. You can also set up automatic recurring investments and they have a roundups feature where you can link a credit card and they'll monitor your purchases and round up the change to the next whole dollar. So if you spend $2.25 on coffee, then they'll round that up by 75 cents to the next whole dollar. And once you have $10 worth of roundups, it'll automatically purchase another bond. And with Worthy, even though the bonds technically mature in three years, you can still access your money whenever you want without penalties. So it's not like it's tied up and you can't touch it. Because these bonds are so liquid and the risk is relatively low, I almost treat it as a type of long-term savings account for money that I know I won't need to access for more than a year. Just keep in mind that because this is technically still an investment, like all investments, when you sell your bonds for profit, you'll owe taxes on that profit. The second type of investment I would recommend after the bond is called an index fund. And basically, an index fund is a type of mutual fund that consists of many different stocks. Instead of trying to pick individual stocks and put your eggs in a few baskets, an index fund consists of hundreds of different stocks, which is going to give you diversification, which is basically just going to lower your investment risk. 
since your money is spread between so many different companies, if one doesn't do well, it still has all of the other stocks in the fund to make up for it. The purpose of an index fund is to try to match the stock market return of a stock market index, whereas an actively managed fund is trying to beat the index. There are many indexes around the world, but the three major ones in the US are the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. I'm not gonna go too deep into these today, just understand that the stock market index is basically an indicator of the overall direction of the stock market and if it's going up or down. The reason I love index funds over an actively managed fund is their fees are ridiculously low because an index fund is considered a passively managed fund. An actively managed fund is trying to beat the stock market index, but they're charging you a lot more to do it. I have some index funds that charge a 0.04% expense ratio, which means that for every $1,000 invested in that fund, I'm only paying 40 cents per year in fees. So it's a pretty small price to pay compared to an actively managed mutual fund, which could charge anywhere from one to 3%. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, one to 3% doesn't seem too steep, but if you have a million dollars invested, then on the index fund charging 0.04%, you're paying $400 a year versus an actively managed fund charging 2%, which is $20,000 every year. Over your investing lifetime, that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees paid more on the actively managed fund. So that alone is a reason enough for me to go with index funds. One issue with index funds though, is that many have high minimum investments that require one to 3,000 upfront just to open an account. In recent years though, something called the exchange traded fund or ETF has become popular, which trades an index fund like an individual stock. Essentially, even though it's still an index fund that consists of many different stocks, so you're still getting the diversification and rate of return of the index fund, but now you don't have the same minimum requirement to start investing. And this is where my second investing platform comes in that will allow you to get started investing in index funds with $10 or less, and it's called Robinhood. This is an app that lets you buy and sell investments such as stocks and ETFs, but allows you to buy fractional shares. So let's say you wanted to buy into a Vanguard index fund called VFIAX, but the minimum investment is $3,000. Well, that index fund has an ETF equivalent called VOO or VU that at the time of recording this costs a little over $330 a share. But $330 is still a lot of money. And if you don't have enough to buy a full share, then you can buy part of a share through Robinhood and you can do this with even as little as $1. I'll show you here, this is my Robinhood, and I actually have some money invested in VU, which again is the ETF version of the Vanguard Index Fund, VFIAX. Through Robinhood, I bought 0.665801 shares. And you can see actually another Vanguard ETF called uh, VTI, I have 1.48 shares. And this goes with any investment purchase through Robinhood not just ETFs. You can see these other stocks, I have 5.11 and 6.74 shares and so on. So being able to buy partial shares is a really nice feature and lowers the barrier to entry when it comes to getting started investing. Again, this is not a recommendation. VU and VTI are just two ETFs I've chosen to invest my money in. Take it with a grain of salt coming from someone sitting in sweatpants talking to a camera. And there are a lot of apps that works similar to Robinhood, such as Acorns and Stash, to name a few. Robinhood just happens to be what I use because it was recommended to me by a friend, and after doing my own research, I decided to try it, and I like their interface, so I'm sticking with it for now. There might be a better platform out there for you, but you'll have to do that research for yourself. If you want me to review some other platforms out there, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do some kind of in-depth review or comparison video in the future. I also just wanna mention that Robinhood doesn't charge you any commission fees when you buy or sell stocks or ETFs. If you haven't noticed, I don't like paying fees, so that's a nice bonus. And speaking of no fees, Fidelity actually has no fee index funds 
and they have no minimum investment. So that's another option for getting started. You can open an investment account with Fidelity with $1 and invest in an index fund. I don't currently have any investments with Fidelity other than my 401k and IRA, which are retirement accounts, but I'm actually thinking of investing in one of these no fee index funds. So I figured I'd mention it today. So finally, I wanna tell you about Wealthfront. Now Wealthfront is also an app-based bank that I use for both a high yield savings account and investment account. Wealthfront has a $500 minimum to open an investment account but the reason I'm mentioning it is because what you can do is put as little as $1 into a high yield savings account, which will still earn some interest. Not as much as other investments, but definitely more than if it were stuffed under your mattress or even in some big bank savings account. With Wealthfront, you can even set up your account so that as soon as you have $500 in your high yield savings, you can use that to automatically open an investment account. The fees on Wealthfront investment accounts are slightly higher than a normal index fund, but still significantly less than your average actively managed fund. And that's because it's what's called a robo-advisor, where they don't pay a person to manage your money, a robot does it. And this is actually a lot more common and less Terminator uh, sounding than you think. And Wealthfront offers a nice feature where you can take a short quiz that will determine your investment risk tolerance which basically just determines if you would rather invest in safer or more risky investments. And then they make investment choices for you based on that risk tolerance. Wealthfront also offers something called automatic tax loss harvesting, which is just a fancy way of saying that they will sell investments at a loss to lower your capital gains liability and less taxes means more money in your pocket, which is never a bad thing. And I know I said that I'm not trying to sell you anything, which I'm not, but if you are interested in trying out Worthy, Robinhood, or Wealthfront, I'll put links in the description that you can use to try them. These are links that any active user gets. So again, I'm not sponsored by these companies, but if you wanna try them, I'll link them below with a brief summary of what you can get um, just by using my referral link. So there it is. With less than $10, you can get started investing today with Worthy, Robinhood or Wealthfront and start your investment portfolio to start saving and investing to build your wealth. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you found this video informative, then please do me a favor of smashing the like button and making sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so you never miss an upload. Every time you like one of my videos, an angel gets its wings or something like that. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at the handle below. I post a mixture of finance related content as well as fitness, which I'm also very into. And of course, cute pictures of my dog. So if that interests you, go ahead and give me a follow over on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.